All right, so our fifth and final entry point of the day is the persistent menu. And honestly, to me, the persistent menu is a little bit of an outlier as an entry point because as you know, with all the other entry points we've been discussing, you know, you're bringing users from an outside source like a website into your chatbot. But with the persistent menu, it's a little bit different because users are only interacting with the persistent menu if they're already a chatbot user. So I guess you can think of it a little bit differently as the persistent menu being like an entry point within your bot to other flows. It helps you drive traffic for your existing chatbot users into other flows. So that being said, let's talk a little bit more about what this is, the uses of it, and then how you can actually implement it in your chatbot. So, if you look at my screen right now, you'll actually see hiding in plain sight, the persistent menu. It's those three horizontal lines down here in the messenger window. You see it right here. You can also think of it like a hamburger style icon. And if I click that, you'll see what it looks like. Basically, the persistent menu is a menu that's always accessible to users who are chatting with your bot. And the main use of it is really as a core navigational menu. So if at any point in the conversation, the user wants to go back, restart, unsubscribe, anything like that, to me, that's the main use of the persistent menu. And as you see here, you can have up to three options in it. So you really need to narrow down what are the most important actions that a user can take in your chatbot and put them there. So now that you've seen the persistent menu and know what it does, let's dive into chat fuel and to flow builder specifically to show you how to set it up and all the bells and whistles along the way. So here we are, we're back at this ice cream flow that we created earlier. And if we want to add a persistent menu here, we will zoom out. And again, you know the drill at this point, we'll double click at the beginning of the canvas here on the empty space and add persistent menu. So I'll drag this over here as it's reorganizing and then we can add our menu items. So I'll zoom in a little bit here. There we go, much better. And I'll add some menu items. So again, you have up to three options. The ones that I would definitely always recommend are restart bot and unsubscribe. Those are just super important actions that you wanna make sure are accessible to the users. And then I would say you have one more for your own discretion, right? Some sort of action, some sort of goal that you want users to complete in your bot. So I'll start up here by saying restart bot and then unsubscribe. And then we can add another, like in this case, we're encouraging users to complete a product recommendation quiz. So we'll say something like take quiz and we're good to go. And since this is the most important call to action for us as a business, let's drag that up to the top. Cool. And so then what I'll do is connect this take quiz option to the quiz flow that we have right here. Looks good. And then for these other ones, we're actually gonna connect them to other flows in our chatbot. So for restart bot, let's just connect that just for sake of conversation to the Facebook page flow that we created earlier. And let me type that in, Facebook page. Great, so we'll connect the restart to that flow. Again, there's no real purpose behind it and the content won't make sense, but just for sake of argument, we're connecting it to another flow. In this case, you know, our quote unquote welcome flow. And then for unsubscribe, I've created another flow for that. So I'll type in unsubscribe here. There we go, looks good. I'll organize this to make it look a little better. And cool, so we have our basic persistent menu set up. Now, all that we need to do to actually make it live is of course, tap this toggle right here. And it's gonna tell me a very important message, which is you can only have one persistent menu for the entire chatbot. So it's just letting us know, hey, you're enabling this persistent menu. It's going to affect everything else. If you have another persistent menu set up in another flow, this is going to override that. And to that I say, Sounds good. So I'll click continue and we are all good to go. Now, two other final things to mention here with the persistent menu is first the ability to add localization, right? So this is really important. If you have a multilingual chatbot or you're dealing with users in multiple languages, you can click to add a localization and you know I'll choose any random language here, let's say Danish and we could localize that persistent menu, right? Add the text in that actual language so that users 
who are coming in and speak that language, at least according to their Facebook profile, they'll actually know how to interact with the bot. Now, one thing here, obviously it's just going to localize that persistent menu. It won't actually localize and translate the entire chat bot. So obviously you would only really wanna do this if you have a chat bot that's been translated and that whole experience is translated, but at the very least you can localize the language in your persistent menu. So one other thing that I will mention here, and I'll delete this in the meantime, is that you can also disable user input in the persistent menu. And what that does is it does not allow a user to type in any message throughout the messenger experience. Now, this sounds great in theory because there are certain points in the chatbot experience where you would wanna disable this, for example, in this product recommendation quiz, if it's my sole goal to have people complete that flow, well then I probably would wanna disable user input because then they're not gonna send me messages, they're not gonna get sidetracked, they'll only be able to stick to and reply with buttons and quick replies that we set up for them. However, if you disable user input, it does that for the entire bot, not just the flow. And that's unfortunate because, you know, if you want the user to enter an email or enter a phone or enter any information whatsoever, then they won't be able to freely type that in. So just something to consider. But again, if you do want to disable user input for the entire chat bot, you just flip this switch right here and you're good to go. So again, that is how the persistent menu works. I'll zoom out here. Again, keep in mind that whatever persistent menu you set up and enable, it will affect the entire chatbot and any other menus will be overridden. But at any rate, that's how to use the persistent menu and why it's so important. So add it to your bot today.